Hi, my name is Omar, and this video is for those of you that need help not buying the Fujifilm X-T5. <laughs> Roll intro. Yeah, so this video is for those of you that maybe have it in your cart, maybe your spouse is mad at you that you're spending $1,600 on a new toy. <laughs> maybe you just are confused whether you should upgrade or not. And it is a great camera. We should probably start with everything that's fantastic. This was a great upgrade because of the following reasons. Number one, we like, I'm sorry videographers, I'm sorry, we like the flip up screen. The other one is very, you know, convoluted. <laughs> the second reason you should upgrade, but remember don't, that's what this video is about, is <laughs> the battery life is great. These new batteries are fantastic. And I hope future iterations, like for example, the next small camera that Fujifilm will make, uh, we'll have this larger battery because it was just great walking around and not worrying about carrying three batteries or, you know, those smaller batteries. And personally, for me, the third great upgrade on this version is the image stabilization that's in body. Previous X-T3, X-T2 bodies with this form factor did not have image stabilization and it was a little hard to shoot video stabilized. You could pretty much only do it with lenses that were stabilized. But now with this camera, you could throw even this little 27 millimeter f2.8 lens and just get video with it. So that's great. Okay, but I know what you're saying. Why shouldn't I get the X-T5? Well, first of all, can you afford it? Let's talk money first. I think if you have an X-T3 that you're happy with or an X-T4 that you're happy with, then you don't, maybe if you have upgrade syndrome, you want this camera, but think about what $1,600 can get you in the Fujifilm world, other lenses, or maybe just a smaller used body as a second Fujifilm camera, if you're in the Fujifilm world. So um, think about that too, that the price of the camera, um, there's always value, of course, in the older used cameras, which I love, but money. The second deal breaker is the 40 megapixel sensor. My hope for the camera companies was that we would stop with this megapixel war when we realized that 24 was the perfect amount of megapixels. Um, higher megapixels have their place. Personally, I love when I shoot cityscapes. I love seeing every little window and detail and zooming into the photo. I'm sure if you do wildlife as well, if you need to crop a lot on little birds. But larger megapixels comes with a little bit of a a hit, and one of the hits is your computer processing power slows down. So uh, I have a Mac Studio, which is a pretty powerful computer, and still the previews take a little longer to sort of render if I'm using Lightroom, which is a little annoying. If you have a 16 megapixel file or a 24 megapixel file from Fujifilm, it just pops up, you can start working on it. But just that little hesitation shows me that as hard drives get full and computers get slower, uh, <laughs> if you have a slow computer, you may need to buy a new computer. Then your spouse is really gonna be really mad at you. Try explaining that one. I need a new camera and a new MacBook Pro to go with it. <laughs> now the good thing is if you wanna shoot smaller files, uh, Fujifilm does have compressed options, but it's still, they're still pretty big as far as you know megabytes go. But you can also shoot, comp uh, you can shoot smaller JPEGs. So if you don't want a file that's 7,000 uh, pixels across, you can actually shoot smaller JPEGs, which might be easier to transfer to your phone and move around and stuff. And if you need it a little more convincing, let me just show you some old X-T20, 24 megapixel JPEG photos. You see a lot of detail, a lot of color richness. It's all good. You don't need to upgrade. The next one is your noise tolerance. Now my noise tolerance is pretty low. I found that with the Fujifilm X-T5, you're kind of 800 is fine. 1600 for me, for my noise tolerance, is probably the max. 3264, which is kind of sad, which is pretty usable in some of the other Fujifilm cameras, I didn't really want to go there. 
Again, this is your noise tolerance. Mine is a little lower. I like clean files. Now, if you like connecting your Fujifilm camera to your computer or to an external screen, then another deal breaker is the micro HDMI connection. Fujifilm's newer cameras, the X-H, that line. If you do more video, I would totally go to those cameras. They were really great. And they had a larger HDMI connector, which is just, oh, it's so great if you're constantly connecting the camera to a screen or a computer. The micro one, I have broken those little cables and they're, they're, it's tough to see to get them in there. So uh, that might be a deal breaker. Something else to consider is that Fujifilm released a list of lenses that work great with the 40 megapixel sensor and some lenses like this 27 millimeter are not on that list. So you have to think about too, do you need to buy optimized lenses now? Something to consider. Something else to think about is maybe wait until the dust settles and <laughs> on some of the issues that have been reported. One issue has been uh, that people have discussed is that the camera seems to lock on to an eye, but then when you review your photos, there are some blurry photos. But I think what's happening is that the green box doesn't really mean autofocus confirmation. It just means that the camera is tracking at that location so I don't think we're actually getting a confirmation of the camera is actually locked onto autofocus. Maybe that's what the issue, but one reason to wait is to see what the issue is. Is it firmware or is it the camera or is it the lenses that maybe people are using, myself included? So just wait. The other XT cameras used to be able to have a battery grip on the bottom. This one you cannot. So I saw a lot of comments where that was a big deal for people. Personally, I never have shot with a battery grip at all, but some people liked, you know, a little better ergonomics by adding that grip uh, and the extra battery life worry-free. Just go out and not, you know, worry. <laughs> and the last deal breaker is actually going to be a future video. I'm actually filming that after this, but I thought that the Fujifilm X-T5 would be a... I thought the Fujifilm X-T5 would be a better hybrid camera. And it is, it shoots amazing 6K video, woohoo! And then you can switch to photo and take photographs. But the problem is if you wanna shoot some 6K, some 24P at 4K, if you set custom functions on this camera, you can't really save a lot of your shutter speeds and things jumping from different video formats. So it, using it as a video and photo camera walking around can be a little frustrating. So stay tuned for that video where I demonstrate how it's easier in other cameras and it is even older Fujifilm cameras and it's a little harder on this camera. So if you're photo centric mostly, you're not gonna have any problems. And if you just take a little video, you're not gonna have any problems. But if you wanna shoot different kinds of videos, different formats, different resolutions, um, it's a little rough to go back and forth between photo and video. All right, so there you go. Just buy the, I mean, sorry, don't buy the Fujifilm X-T5 if you don't need it. It could really ruin your relationship with your partner. <laughs> All right, I hope that was helpful. Let me know uh, what you think about um, any other deal breakers. Let me know if, you, if I forgot any, and I'll see you guys next time.